Nice to meet you. Very nice meeting you. Uh, Fang has yet to arrive? Yes. Uh, he got delayed somehow, I guess. But Okay, it's fine. Uh, so... That's in the, the end, you and I can meet, and then he can join. <laughs> that's right. That this is the co-working space. Yeah, it is. Okay, I, I'm sure she'll love it. I mean, this looks pretty. Oh, it, well, oh well, well decorated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, very hipster. It's like uh, it's not a normal co-working space. It's like uh, for artists and so forth. So, know, but it's it's cute. It is cute. I'll just grab some coffee, uh, and this is. Our administration building, as you can see, it's also kind yes. of hipster. You get business origami, <laughs> you get any number of post-it notes. Uh, it's <laughs> shaped very much like a co-working space, but not a artsy one. Uh, we yeah. have another office that's the more artsy one. So, so yeah, let, let's get started, because I have yeah. maybe an hour or so. Um, yeah, sounds good. Okay, so so yeah. First, thank you for for making the time. Um, no, thank you for making the time. Right, and um, I, I mean we can talk about a million subjects, but I'm most yes. interested in QV. Uh, yes, that's, and, that's great. And and so what what I mean I, I've read the paper, uh, and yeah. I've talked with quite a few um, people interested in implementing the idea from the. Um, social financing side, as well as yeah. from the public donation side, as well as from the extracting promise out of mayors promising to do <laughs> to not do something within their term yeah. side, um, and and so on. So I mean, just for the sake of benefit of the readers and viewers of this recorded video, um, w would you like to outline some of the main ideas and topics? That you you are personally now working on or focused, and then we can yeah. On. So so um, around quadratic voting, the thing that we are uh, most interested in is first of all um, the idea of having a democratic system that allows minorities to protect themselves rather than uh, to have bureaucrats or judges or something like that be in charge of protecting minorities mm -hmm. by giving every citizen an equal budget of what we call voice credits mm -hmm. that they can allocate to support or oppose issues and candidates that they most strongly favor or oppose, mm -hmm. but not allowing people to just be extremists and dominate an issue because it would become increasingly expensive to have more influence on an issue, the more influence that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the quadratic nature. And um, this can be applied to uh, voting situations. It can be applied by politicians to poll, mm -hmm. uh, to figure out positions that might form a legitimate basis for legitimate public decision making. Mm -hmm. It can also be used for funding. So if you want to fund local public goods, Vitalik Buterin and I worked mm -hmm. on a variant of this idea where rather than it just being a way of voting, you would actually have public matching funds. Mm -hmm that could be given to different local projects or even say to media mm -hmm. and individuals could make contributions mm -hmm. and the amount that would be received by say the charitable cause or the candidate or whatever would be the sum of the square mm -hmm. fund. Oh, no, I'm just checking that she's not here. Okay. Sorry. Um, would be the sum of the square roots all squared. Mm -hmm. And so what that would mean is that smaller contributions would receive more matching funds from the public and causes that had received contributions from more people would also receive more matching funds. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of overcoming the usual free rider problem mm -hmm. where when you have public projects, people don't want to individually contribute to them because they would only do it if other people would go along with them. So um, I've been working on all of those, um, and uh, we've been thinking about applications for everything from funding news media, because you know it's not usually well-funded, just mm -hmm. purely private means, but on the other hand, you don't really want the government funding it because it could control the media and undermine democracy. Mm -hmm. um, and everything from that to, um, you know, making decisions in local councils. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we've also been working on these sort of identity solutions that would be necessary to support a system like that because it requires a notion of different voters. And if you don't want that to all be done by some central government authority, 
approving uh, people to participate, we've been working on identity solutions as well. That's great. Thank you for the summary. Who came up with the Monica liberal radicalism, if I may ask? Uh, me and Zoe Hitzig. Okay, it's it's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So, um, if I say I'm a person interested in participating uh, in crowdfunding, you just mentioned I may yeah. um, regular um, per, uh, donating or actually funding a person on Patreon, uh, and now yeah. Kickstarter has introduced a new drip. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you're aware of many other such. Um, uh, platforms um, and of course um, Kickstarter is a uh, B Corp supposedly uh, that they drive their social purpose and so on but nowadays we're also seeing quite a few because the technology is out there now quite a few what we call platform cooperatism or with any other name but people are basically uh, putting up their own crowdfunding distributing schemes upon open collectives and other open co-op movements so are you aware of any of these adopting QV I mean from an end user perspective I think yeah. that's probably what makes the most sense to have the first experience in yeah so um, there's a donation platform mm -hmm. on Ethereum called we trust mm -hmm. that uh, actually put a hundred thousand dollars or uh, 500 ETH uh, behind um, matching funds mm -hmm. for uh, liberal radicalism for donations to charity mm -hmm. uh, and there's also a lot of different uh, mostly ethereum based platforms that have been using quadratic voting for various governance things everything from regulating um, the process of electing people to do block making within a permissioned system that is used for doing import export regulatory compliance mm -hmm. to um, commercial real estate developments that are tokenizing real estate and that are governing some of the choices about how to invest the community resources mm -hmm. um, using this mechanism. That's great. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a wide range of different projects like that. So starting this month, if you go to spring.wetrust.io, you can actually have the first ex experience of QV. Exactly, you found it. Yes. So, um, but I mean, I just looked at uh, the... Uh, there's the usual suspects such as the Miri and the sense research. Um, how? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and which? Hold I, on one I, second. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Fun, fun's right. Okay. Jerry's phone here. Hi, Fun. Hi. How are you doing? No worries. Audrey's on the line, so we okay. should just jump jump in because she it's being recorded. <laughs> okay. Here. You can come in and you can close the door okay. and uh, you have to actually do this in order to get it to stay close. Oh, right. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, now it's me and Fun here together. Hi. Hi. Hello, hello. No problem. Yeah, no, no, no worries. No worries. Before I leave. So, sorry. No, it's just yeah. fine. Take your time. Uh, grab something. This is very artsy hipster place. I wish I'm here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a very hipster co yeah. space, isn't it? <laughs> I like the accent. Yeah. Yes, so yeah, I, I was just to, uh, looking at this. Uh, so, fun just for context, uh, I'm looking through this um, crowdfunding website that is currently applying Glenn's idea of what we call uh, a QV or quadratic voting. Uh, and here is the. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so this is basically a matching donation scheme now through Giving Tuesday. Uh, and for this month, they're matching based on the liberal radicalism idea, which uh, Glenn just explained kindly for our viewers. In short, it basically says if you have a lot of money, or if you can mobilize a lot of people to donate a small amount of money each, it's going to be roughly the same by taking the square roots of each donation and matching them accordingly. And there's the usual suspects, Miri, Sense, 
uh, the Ubuntu Foundation, uh, joining this um, crowdfunding experiment, I would say. But uh, there's also uh, African Advocacy Network, as well as Surgeons of Hope, and the more traditional uh, charities, and of course, some the people in between, like Code for America, which I'm not surprised at all um, as uh, being listed here. Um, and so uh, I was just about to ask Glenn, um, yeah. how, how do you how do you think is the synergy between the different uh, projects here? Because one of the underlying assumption in the uh, QV idea is that the projects themselves um, compete somewhat for resources, so that yeah. the I wouldn't say winner takes all, but the most well known charities or most well known causes or most well known participatory budget items or whatever dominates the resource kind of in a uh, network effect increasing returns uh, fashion. Uh, and QV is designed to kind of mitigate that. So, uh, taking this very concrete example of quite a few people funding the, the Lupus Foundation, uh, and at the moment, not much at all, um, at the African Advocacy network how, how does it help well one one property that qv absolutely does have is that in the in this particular formula the more people that are contributing to something the more the effect of a marginal dollar you contribute on that particular one but on the other hand unlike sort of purely majoritarian schemes um it's not like that's predetermined it's not like oh you have to just vote for one thing oh. Instead, the notion is you could give a little bit of funding to some things, more funding to others, uh, et cetera. And so the notion is that it should allow sort of for an optimal balance between you not wanting things to be too fragmented because people feel they can free ride on the things that already have momentum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the other hand, things being uh, too concentrated because mm -hmm. like the democratic process just leads whatever the majority prefers to win. Right, but I, I mean, does it require a overview effect of the current budget situation? Or do you think that it can also work in an uncoordinated fashion where people just make I, individual choices? I think you do need to have probably some view of what the current funding levels are. And you actually saw that on that site. They make it pretty transparent what the current funding levels are. Okay. So that's helpful for the users. Right, so it requires a period of time, and just like participatory budgeting, actually, but instead right. of dot voting, uh, you have dots that grow or shrink based on how many dots uh, you, you spent exactly. on a particular item. Um, so ha have you actually um, visualized this? Uh, because when I see the spring we trust, uh, I don't see any visualization of the shrinking dots, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I haven't come up with a really compelling visualization of it, but in some of the articles online, I believe there's one where they show the, this kind of cool diagram which shows, I don't know if you saw this one, but they, they show little blocks stacked on top of each other by their height. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, their that, that's very, show. very cute. And, yes. and so, uh -huh. so then anything with the same height, but then the volume of them shows how much actually comes from the contributions relative to how much comes from the matching. So the matching is like sort of the right hand side and the blocks width mm -hmm. is how much comes from the private contributions. So I thought that was a smart visualization of it. Oh yeah, that's a great visualization. So just just think that you have any number of square votes really <laughs> and that you can exactly. you can buy areas, but the areas is going to count toward their height. I think that's exactly. a beautiful that's beautiful a, uh thing. Um Actually, that applies to circles also, right? It doesn't have it does. to be squares. Or, or, or another thing you can apply it to is, is a funnel. Mm -hmm. So imagine like a, um, you have like a, a, a triangle mm -hmm. and you pour your liquid into the triangle mm -hmm. and how high it gets determines how much value there gets. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yes, of course. Yeah. So yeah. so and it ties very well uh, with the idea of the the um, experiment actually that's that's going on because it's a spring, right? So you can have spring that exactly. goes into a funnel and it's, oh, that's all, good it's all very water exactly. commons based um, yeah, exactly. liquid solutions. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So I wish people watching this video will volunteer some visualizations um, <laughs> because we have real data now and uh, the spring we trust right. is on the, the chain, right? It's on, on Ethereum. It is. It's on the Ethereum chain. So, so yeah. anyone can take the public chain data and do cool, amazing visualizations.
Yeah. All right. So, um, Fang, w would you like to quickly introduce yourself to our viewers, <laughs> and <laughs> and so so that we can we can chat more freely? I'm sure right uh, afterwards. But it's just yeah. I have maybe only uh, forty minutes after this, yeah. so so we can sure. maybe yeah. switch from topic to topic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. So, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, my name is Fang, yeah. and I'm a service design uh, consultant at PIDIS. Great. So I, um, one of uh, Audrey's agenda is open government. So I help facilitate the mechanism, which is called Particip Participation Officers Network. It's a network yeah. um, of 70 civil servants across 34 ministries. Yeah. And we hope to use that mechanism to cut across the uh, governmental silos and oh, cool. help people to work towards different issues more openly and creatively, not just within the circle, but also onto the wider stakeholders. It sounds a little bit like what at Microsoft we call the office of the chief technology officer. It's like one office that's allowed to cut across everything and facilitate yeah. collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. That's radical horizontalism uh, for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, and Fang uh, helped build this network of uh, people, um, and each ministry can, can have a team of people. And at the moment, we're still using old school approval voting uh, to pick yeah. every month uh, what topic of priority to work on. Uh, and because they come from e-petition, you can also think of it as a kind of approval voting, uh, where yeah. at, at any time, anyone can decide to countersign a petition to raise yeah. their priority of, of about which that we take a interest uh, in looking at. And at the moment in Taiwan, there's 23 million people and the uh, uh, e-petition network uh, online is being used by 5 million people. So one quarter of the population, which is not too bad. Yeah. Uh, wow. And uh, people just um, countersign each other and we have some machine recommendation <laughs> algorithm like Netflix or Amazon uh, that yeah. We recommend similar interested petitions, but it's also, yes. of course, for budgeting, visualization, regulation, pre-announcement, participatory budgeting on the city level. Yeah. So it's an all-in-one participation platform. And so um, the, the way it works is that whenever there's anything that receives 5,000 signatures over a uh, two-month period, gets a view uh, from all the participation officers and they can explain and defend whether it needs a cross-ministerial collaboration and then we do a approval uh, voting anonymously on it and then we select two cases every month uh, to collaborate on but each and every one that reached the 5,000 people threshold automatically gets um, a binding power to basically being interviewed, being talked with by the stakeholders and uh, publish the full um, transcript of the the conversation and get a point-by-point -point response within two months uh, from the respective ministry. So that's one of the more successful uh, direct democracy-ish um, experiments that yeah. we do. Uh, and it's, it's been working pretty well because people essentially, when they're petitioning, have unlimited number of votes. Uh, and they are somewhat authenticated through SMS. And so it's difficult to get 5,000 yeah. SMS numbers, as you know. And so that's the yeah. system that we're currently working on. I'm, I'm just, as, as you were talking about this crowdfunding idea, I was just wondering uh, how QV or a similar um, design can, can help. But it seems like when it's just agenda setting or priority setting, uh, and it's not allocation of resources, it, it's kind of... Um, okay to use approval voting, no? Well, I, I think approval voting is better than some systems, but I would prefer a QV-based system because what I'd like people to be able to express is the same thing that they, in other cases, express through a protest. Mm -hmm. So when you get it in protest, it's a more costly action than just signing a petition, but it shows that something is very important to you. Mm -hmm. And so... But not everyone likes to protest. Not everyone likes to be out in public. So I'd like a more private way for people to do that. Mm -hmm. So if every citizen had a budget of credits and they could say, this issue is incredibly important to me, maybe only you would need 300 things like that. Mm -hmm. But maybe you would need 10,000 or 15,000 if people just say, well, I'm interested, but I don't really care. Mm -hmm. Right. So. And at the moment, for example, at any given moment, uh, the joint platform may have 100 petitions going on. Yeah. Uh, and the tr truth is that maybe uh, after two months, only five 
of them will get the five thousand people threshold. Yeah. That's that's the situation, the reality we're yeah. we're now facing. So what you're proposing essentially is that、um, if you can get any number like five hundred people feeling that it's really important. Uh, for some、yeah. definition of really important, so much so that they are willing to forsake their、uh, capability of petitioning for that particular month on any particular issue,、uh, right. any other issue. They dedicate their petition resource, so to speak,、uh, on、right. this issue. Then it only takes, you know,、um, a, a square root of of our current yeah, threshold、yeah. uh, to basically、uh, pin it into our must respond.、Um, Uh, board and the、uh, number is going to and, be very low. It's going to be seventy per people, basically. Yeah. yeah, and and conversely, like you know, you you said you have these recommendation things. There might be some people who just are having fun, and on the website they click on one and then they follow the recommendation. They click on the other and they don't even think anything about it, right? And those things you might want to require ten thousand or fifteen thousand、mm-hmm. such signatures in order to respond because they're not really driven by passion.、Mm-hmm. They're driven, you know, depth of importance. They're just driven by entertainment. You know、mm-hmm. what I mean? And so you want to have some way of measuring that.、Mm-hmm. And the idea is that quadratic voting could help you do that. Right. So from a、uh, interface or experience design perspective, because we have a professional experience designer here,、uh, how, how would that even work? I mean, Medium、uh, says you know if you're just passing by, you just click on claps. It's one each. But if you feel really strongly, you can keep holding that clap button, and it、yeah. will grow、uh, in number. Would、yeah. you recommend some interface like that, or do you have something else in mind? I, I actually I quite enjoy that medium、uh, interface. I think it's pretty good. I mean, I think I think it would be better to have some sort of a token if you can build the inner the infrastructure that's necessary for that. But obviously, that requires a more persistent identity than just an SMS code,、mm-hmm. right? So that's the disadvantage of it. But I think if you can do that, then people don't have to spend so much time holding down the clap. You can just reveal it through how they spend the scarce resource. Right, so it、yeah. would be like a slider or something. Yes, Fang was、yeah. saying something. You just ra- raise a very important point, like how can we distinguish、um, if the vote is really valuable? Yeah. Am I passionate about that, or am I just doing this for entertaining? And the question is, how can we tell? What、yeah. are the criteria that we can set up to evaluate that? Well, I Because- can show you what it looks like for quadratic voting.、Sure. It might help you see it. I, I can give you a nice、um, okay. user interface.、Yeah. Let me、okay. see whether I can. Let's do the screen share thing. Yeah, I just need to get my brave. I'm using Brave.、Ah. Need to get it.、Right. Here we go. The right addresses. Okay,、uh, it's going to take me a little while to get the website up, so I need to find it. Can you, can you grab my phone from there? Sure. I, yeah, I just、uh, I, I don't、Is、have the、iPad? address. Yeah, I don't have the address saved on right here. So, oops, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. The advantage of Brave is that it doesn't remember everything that you've ever done, but the disadvantage of Brave is that it doesn't remember everything that you've ever done. So,、uh, okay, here we go. Right, it's okay.、Uh, it's it's more human.、Uh, it yeah, proves、exactly. we're not all exocortexes. <laughs> exactly. Heroku app. Okay, there we go, and now I'm in a screen share.、Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Here we go. Did you get it? Well, yes.、Um, ah, that's great. Okay, so you have a hundred credits left, and here are various referenda、mm-hmm. which you could vote in favor of or against.、Mm-hmm. So, an immediate tax cut for wealthy individuals and corporations. Let's say we're opposed to that. We put one credit on that. 
background requirements for all gun purchases. Let's say we're in favor of that, but we actually are strongly in favor, so we want to put more than one vote on it. So you see my votes are going down faster and faster mm -hmm. as I put more and more votes on it. You see mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas if I put just one vote on that, it just goes very quickly. So yeah. this measures how much you care about it mm -hmm. yeah. by making it increasingly expensive to have more votes so that you'll buy votes just up to the point where you care enough. Yeah. And then that will be proportional to the number of votes that you've already bought. Sure. Mm -hmm. And in regards to those statements. You can touch the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are those people who set up the, the, the statements? Well, in this case, this was a poll that we did for a political candidate in the United States. But um, in general, it doesn't have to be that. It could be actually citizens proposing these sure. things. And then once they cross the 5,000 mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, vote threshold, yeah. they could be uh, allowed. Sure, yeah. So far, do you have any thoughts about how applicable or where uh, it could be applicable in our process? Because I'm very eager to prototype it. Yeah, I think this is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And I think this also reflects to our conversation earlier last week. We talk about when you propose certain things, the stage before is noticing. Mm. So, Raising awareness, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because when you want to propose something, it depends on um, your allocation of attention. Yes. Uh, your allocation of t attention based on the information uh, you receive. Right. And also the people you interact with. Right. But what if um, your inco chamber is limited? So it prevents you from seeing the um, the people's view from other sites, even within the same topic. Yes. And I see this is a very uh, dangerous move mm -hmm. towards proposal. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to talk a little bit more is a step before, mm -hmm. like how can we make sure that the we got... Democratic discourse is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. Sorry, sorry it shut down. I don't know what happened. No, it's just um, fine. Yeah. So what, what I was going to say is that the voting mechanism itself can help shape the incentives people have to get information. Under quadratic voting, having very extreme opinions is very expensive to do. Okay. Uh, having more moderate opinions is cheaper. So the hope, and unlike in match standard voting, if you take somebody who you really disagree with and you cause them to disagree a little bit less, even if you don't completely change their mind, that yeah. still makes a difference in political outcomes. So that creates an incentive for people to talk to more diverse sets of people rather than just the people who they could have a chance to get to truly agree with them. You yeah. see what I mean? When, when you say it's expensive. What, well, it, what because it becomes more, the cost mm -hmm. of the votes goes up the more votes that you get. Yeah. In terms of the units of the credits yeah. that I was just showing. Yeah. So. So I don't think that the voting mechanism itself can solve all these problems. Of course, education is hugely important yeah, yeah, and so forth. But I do think that the voting mechanism can help create an environment where the incentives are aligned with that. And, yeah. and it can actually be pretty powerful because if you think about it, you know, the founders of the American Republic, they didn't want a two party system, but they created a set of incentives created a two-party system yeah. in spite of themselves, right? Because sure. once you have plurality vote, one first past the post, it creates a two-party system, right? And so um, I think that some of these incentives can filter back into the way that the politics is organized. And the process can be part of the noticing as well. Yeah, so, yeah that's also true. Yeah. That's a very good point, which is that actually one thing we found when we use this survey with people is that because they have a constraint and they have to make these trade-offs, we often get comments from people that they learned a lot about their own preferences. Um, they didn't realize that they cared so much more about this thing than the other thing until they had to actually make the trade-off between them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so just to follow up on that very quickly, because when you talk about trade-offs, um, the interface you just showed has upvotes and downvotes that kind of cancel yeah. each other out. Um, yeah. And uh, the crowdfunding experiment this spring uh, is entirely upvote only. 
uh, it, yeah. it, it carries no um, notion of compensation, right? Um, yeah. And so, um, are, are there tangible differences in both mathematics and also in psychology uh, when you design things yeah. in a upvote downvote kind of way versus an upvote only way? Yeah. No, absolutely. So. Um, it's it's there's complicated trade-offs between those. On the one hand, if you have downvotes, you have the possibility of censorship that may not be desirable. Mm -hmm. You you also have the possibility, um, yeah. So so I think that that's that's a problem. It's also can be a little bit more complicated for people. But without downvotes, if you have things that are genuinely harmful, for example, a, a, a petition that might be hate speech, or directed targeted against some group in the population, it's actually quite important that you allow downvotes on that as well um, in order to try to limit the possibility of having potentially hateful perspectives. Mm -hmm. Right. So, it, so it's like signal the, um, you know, blockers. Um, exactly. Okay. I think that yeah, makes I mean, a lot of sense. Yeah. In some politics, for example, uh, this doesn't happen, I, I don't think, in the Taiwanese system, but in the United States, there's often something that happens where a very a politician that's very not popular will do well, not because they're popular, but just because people are afraid of the other alternative. And mm. if you could vote negatively on the other alternative, that issue wouldn't show up. I see, I see. Well, that's, that's a powerful argument right there. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to show you the... Uh, real interface of petitioning that we are talking yes, about please. because I think that will uh, help massively and that's something that Fang Rui can carry on in the conversation afterwards. Um, so this is machine translated but uh, very quickly just to give you an idea. Uh, for example, yeah. there is someone who's Mary X uh, who we know the SMS number, but we don't reveal it. They don't have to be under a real name. They can be a pseudonym. Uh, so it's quite like Ethereum voting uh, in this sense. I see. Um, they can choose a nickname, basically, but that's consistent over time. There's an identity, but that is not mapped into a real world identity, only that we know there's an SMS number behind it. Okay, um, And then um, they proposed to amend the provision of our public service leave rules um, at the moment uh, of petition, it was at least half a day for each vacation, but they wanted to change into by hour, which, by the way, yes. takes takes effect this week. So I took an hour off wow. yesterday. Oh, so it succeeded. Uh, yes, <laughs> right. It's, it's a su successful petition. Uh, and as you can see, um, there's a timer that says two months uh, within the timer. There has to be 5,000 signatures uh, and it's checked, passed, and the response uh, is done. Uh, and there's uh, agency response in each and every uh, step, um, which uh, and you can see the supporting argument of each person participating. Um, but of Very course, cool. nobody has the time to read through the 5,000 uh, people's commentaries. That used to be Fang Rui's uh, largest headache uh, in reading through all those 5,000 um, people's uh, commentary, uh, because sometimes people just uh, you know copy and paste whatever mobilized them to to counter sign. Petition. Sometimes people just write a lot that has no relationship whatsoever with the petition. Do you have some text analysis that can help you process that? that? That's right. So instead of doing text analysis, we just did crowdsourcing. So this is the actual interface now that saves Fang Rui a lot of time. Um, basically, we have two columns. Uh, underneath every petition that people can uh, basically post their supporting arguments on the left hand side column and uh, um, not exactly counter but other arguments on the right hand column. Uh, and so basically what we're now doing uh, is something that is out of the playbook of Better Reykjavik. I don't know whether you know the Icelandic yeah. experiment uh, from the Better Party. Um, and so the Better Reykjavik uh, has the same design. Uh, and we took a page by not actually showing um, the bars in a proportional to their uh, number of uh, comments because that only encouraged spam and nothing really, uh, nothing good yeah. happens. Uh, but so you can see there's 46 supporting arguments and 11 yeah. counter arguments. Uh, and then uh, you each one can receive any a number of upvotes and downvotes. Of course, there's a flag button for truly hate speech stuff. Yeah. But otherwise, we just sort. But uh, we discovered very early on, of course, exactly as you mentioned, although it 
takes the troll away because they cannot really reply to anything, right? There's no reply button, uh, so there's no incentive to attack people. Still, um, people just you know casually um, uh, use downvotes to kind of censor um, the, yeah. the the good arguments. Um, and so we changed the rule now that we take the absolute number of either the upvotes or downvotes. So this one having more downvotes actually um, makes it show on the top. <laughs> That's interesting. So, so, I mean, I, I think quadri yeah. this is another area where something like quadratic voting could be interesting because it could make it costly to just censor. But on the other hand, it could allow you to flag borderline hate speech. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that you don't have time to actually investigate and so forth. So I think I think that's another potentially interesting thing. And in, in principle, you could even unify the two systems together and say that both the signatures of the petitions and the up and down votes for the arguments could be part of a unified system. Mm, like you can cost some credit uh, to to downvote something slightly. Or exactly. you can cost some credit to add a supporting argument, and exactly. it's, it's the credit pool. Uh, everybody receives a new every month, and then yeah. uh, it's used basically just to sort the signals, uh, not the substantial deliberation, which will happen afterward, according to Fang's roadmap. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's the um, that, that's why we call them voice credits, as we think. Voting is a sort of voice, arguments are a sort of voice, all these things are sorts of voice. And we'd like to have a token that can represent a currency for that voice rather than just a currency for buying things. Mm -hmm. So, but, but why voice credits instead of um, voice tokens or whatever? Because credits is yeah. more fungible, more square root no, divided? No, it's just, it's, just, it's just a different word for the same thing. Okay, so, so you don't have an attachment to... Um, no. the, the, the no, name. But, in fact, I wouldn't even call it credits. I would just call it voice. Like you know, you can just think of it as a unit. And in fact, we in in, in the book we use to denote uh, the like currency marker rather than like a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. We use a voice bubble. Ah, okay. Like literally. And it also looks literally a, a speech like bubble. You. Yeah, exactly. Like like uh, what like this one. The speech uh, balloon? Yes, except it has it going to the right-hand side, so it looks a little bit like a Q. Ah. And so that's like quadratic, you know what I mean? Oh, this is this oh, is very cute. Um, <laughs> yeah, so um, the GovZero movement, um, which I'm a, a, a part of, um, yeah. you, you used to um, have the first version of its uh, logo shaped like this. Uh, and yes, exactly. That's exactly what ours looks like, too. <laughs> okay, wow. It's an uh, interesting independent invention. Um, <laughs> and, um, of course, we, we eventually shifted uh, to, to this uh, logo just because everybody types GQV.tw when looking at this logo. <laughs> exactly. Well, that for us, that's good. GQV. <laughs> Government by quadratic coding. Maybe you should, revive, you should revive the original one, but for a different pure purpose well i mean i i still have the domain name gqv the taiwan so um it's currently <laughs> unused i'm happy to donate that to your purpose <laughs> <laughs> okay well and, and i think the v here um which the, is the shape of a vote uh really actually carries the the idea of quadratic voting also right because yes. it, it's basically a stamp of approval on what um your voice matters like and we can make yeah. the dot here you know um proportional exactly as you visualized. So this original logo has some uses. Uh, yay for recycling. Exactly. <laughs> I like it a lot. All right. Another very interesting resonance uh, that I wanted to mention is that you know many of these ideas in the book um, came from someone named William Vickery. William Vickery was a famous economist uh, who won the Nobel Prize. And most of his ideas were based on the work of another economist named Henry George. Mm -hmm. And Henry George has a very deep relationship to Taiwan. I bet most people in Taiwan don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But um, George inspired the ideas of Sun Yat-sen mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, almost as much as Karl Marx inspired mm -hmm. the ideas of Lenin. Mm -hmm. And so there are many elements of policy in Taiwan which actually come from the ideas Mm -hmm. of Henry George. Yes, like the least uh, bad tax. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yes. And so uh the book is very connected 
to these ideas of Henry George. And uh, yeah, Taiwan, Scandinavia, and Singapore are the countries that have been most influenced by those ideas. So there's a natural affinity, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think aside from single tax, which is less related, um, there's yes. also the idea of the citizens' di uh, dividend. I think that's yes. also a George and idea. And the secret ballot. And the so secret, the ballot. secret ballot. ballot was introduced into the United States by Henry George. Ah, okay. Right, so so I think all of these are very relevant nowadays because we're essentially building a a code based normativity around the same ideas that is uh, legal by design instead of by interpretation. Right, uh, in George's time, it would uh, have to have a lot of um, post fact uh, interpretations and negotiations right. and whatever to make the system that he designed actually work as intended instead of as people uh, you know just uh, randomly. Interpret it to be, uh, but but nowadays we get to code these algorithms into code. So, but the communication effort, of course, is the most important. That we can uh, find an intuitive interface that makes people get it, and so that it becomes the social norm, and then we compile that into code. So that yeah, it, that's the most yeah. important thing is that there's a notion of social legitimacy mm -hmm. around the ideas, and and that's the reason why what we're trying to do with these ideas is not just to go to government bureaucrats, but very much like the uh, approach you're taking of trying to be open and communicate with the public and engage them, because we believe that ultimately these ideas will be successful if and only if they are able to become part of people's widespread notion of legitimacy. Because if they don't do that, then they're imposed by a state and they'll be rejected. And if they do do that, then anything that the state does will have to follow that, because otherwise people will be upset, right? And so that's why rather than taking the usual economist approach of we just talk to the central bank, we just talk to the IMF, instead what we're trying to do is actually build a social movement. We have dozens of clubs all around the world um, that are forming around these ideas. We're working with entrepreneurs to experiment with them. We're, we're talking to folks like you who can try experimenting with them in participatory democracy. We want things that are not just experiments, but experiments that people, ordinary people can feel and can get a sense for and can come to incorporate into their notions of what's fair. Mm -hmm. So instead of fighting the system, fighting the existing reality, you're building a new model that eventually makes the existing model obsolete. Which exactly. is the Buckminster Fuller quote that Fang Rui always uses uh, yeah. in her slides. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'm happy to donate to your course, starting with the GQV domain. Uh, yeah. and we, we, can, we can see where, where it goes from that. Yeah. Well, I hope you can also participate, and we're going to have a conference in Detroit mm -hmm. in, uh, in March, and uh, we'll, we'll be in touch with you about that. We'd love to have you participating in it and to find any place where you can experiment and collaborate with us on experimenting mm -hmm. with these things. Uh, I, I think that would be very exciting for all of us. But that, that's awesome. Uh, I mean, um, March is parliamentary inquiry period, but I have yeah. a way of appearing through telepresence, robots, double yeah. robotics, awesome. holograms, uh, and the source. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm happy very to cool. virtually be there. Uh, and there's yeah. also a very quick prototyping system that we work with the Gov Zero movement called V Taiwan. Yeah. Basically, every Wednesday, anyone can come up with an idea of saying, oh, let, how about let's do an experiment this way? And every Everybody just kind of tags along, uh, like literally, I think to this week's experiment is the social physics uh, tags uh, from Sandy, from oh, Alex cool. Fentland. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, it also is a voice credit, voice token, so to speak, because it only measures the volume of your voice. And uh, oh. although voice is not strictly speaking quadratic, if you count the distance, uh, but in any case, yes, it shows the proximity and, and how loud people are speaking and how much attention they're monopolizing, so to speak, and so we can distribute it more fairly in a physical space even if the physical space has its own attenuation parameters, we can change those parameters. So it's almost like speculative well, design it's, stuff. It's very interesting what you say because actually the one inspiration for us calling it voice credits is the physical voice because in ancient Sparta, um, way, the way that they used to do the vote was to try to incorporate intensity of preference 
they allowed people to shout in favor or shout against. It's a little bit like the clapping thing you were saying. Mm -hmm. And whichever side shouted louder in total, based on what you could hear, mm -hmm. would win the vote. Ah, uh, and it's and, it's inverse square, right? Yeah, sort of, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it has some similarities, except, of course, it privileges people who happen to be able to shout loud. Right, but, um, yes. <laughs> and, and, and also, I imagine people who stand uh, in a more strategic position. <laughs> yes, that's true as well, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, I mean... Um, one of the things that we did in virtual reality is attenuation design. Um, so now, right now with Skype, of course, everybody here, like, it's just two of us, so we hear us um, um, equally. But uh, one of the experiments we did in virtual reality is to change um, the position by having people physically walk toward the position they take uh, and then change the attenuation factors. And, and because it's virtual reality, you see, so you can normalize people's input voice level to the same level. Um, but, but then your position determines the sound dissipation. Um, and, and so that's one of the interesting experiments. But I, I can right. go on and on. But what, what I mean is that it's very easy to prototype new ideas, including QV um, in yeah. the Vitawan meetups. And even the national petition uh, mechanism, if we can find, um, there's a beta version, there's a beta uh, yeah. website. And so you, we can also test this dynamic out on the beta website anyway. We tried on the beta side for a year for the visualization of the budget of the entire national um, budget of more than 1,300 actually um, governmental projects. And because the uh, ministries in charge were kind of afraid that if they let everybody literally see the relative budget allocation, yeah. uh, how it's um, being um, executed and all the 1300 uh, cases yeah. um, that they will be swamped with comments and so we only tried an initial pilot with 65 national priority projects before yeah. uh, we let people see that actually responding publicly has a lot better properties because for things like social housing which everybody cares about how well yeah. we're doing and um, how exactly which procurement and spendings went on, people won't waste each other's time. They will actually ask quality questions. And once you um, respond to them fully and in public, everybody just found them through search engines and uh, um, respective authorities don't have to pick up phones, each one not knowing. 50 people have asked this particular question before. So it saves everybody time um, over time, um, but I'm mean, amortized. But in the beginning, we have to put it on the beta uh, stage to show to the um, competent authorities in all the different 34 ministries that this is going to be a time saver, not a time waster for them. Uh, and I so, think that's a great idea. Yeah. So I think that the station... I, mean, I, I would love to do something like that with QV. And, uh, you know, if you guys have relevant developers and you can do it on your own, that would be great and we're happy to consult. But also, there's now a whole movement. We have hundreds of people who are organized around these ideas, probably thousands, um, and in the Ethereum community and different communities. And uh, we'd be happy to find people to collaborate with you if you need support in trying to build a prototype. Oh, yay, um, like free energy. Uh, that's great. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Just, yeah. let, just let us know and we'll, uh, mm -hmm. we'll connect you to people who would be interested in being engaged. Right. So, um, yeah, I just the last thing I want to show is that this is the official uh, participation uh, platform, including municipalities, the corrective and auditing agency, and of course, the administration of Taiwan is in join.gov.tw. Uh, and um, if you change the O to a zero, as is customary <laughs> to the Gov0 movement, you get into the shadow government, which is join.g0v.tw, and anyone can just leave their um, email address there and join the Slack channel on the G0V movement at, at moment, I think it's 4,000 people or so. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to, to donate join.gqv.tw and see what you guys can come up with uh, and <laughs> basically prototype the joint GOVTW system with a reimagination of the QV system. And we'll see how far we can take from that. That sounds great. So we'll we'll follow up uh, maybe by email and find the best way to coordinate collaboration. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's time for me, so uh, I will leave yes, you more time. Lovely. And thank you for this hour-long chat. And I'll just yeah, upload everything you so to YouTube to help spreading the cause. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And if anyone is watching and is interested in being involved or working on this in Taiwan, um, the movement's called Radical Exchange, and you can find me at Glenn Weil on, on Twitter, and uh, we can be in contact. Okay, thank you so much, uh, and uh, enjoy your time in this wonderful RC hipster co-working space. <laughs> Take care, Audrey. Cheers. Bye. -bye. Bye.